Well, good morning and welcome again to Word for the Week, our online book study series here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. I'm Pastor Jeremy Heikem, and I'm glad to be with you again as we uh, continue our look at Jay Payleitner's book, The Prayer of Agar. We are in chapter three this week, and uh, in a very uh, interesting chapter, I think, for this week. Um, I love uh, at the very front of this chapter, at the very beginning of this chapter, how um, Jay Payleitner draws our attention away from Agar's words for just a second, um, and back to David's words from Psalm uh, 19 and verse 1. <clears throat> Psalm 19 and verse 1, it says, The heavens declare the glory of God. Um, and if we were to go and, and look at that full psalm, what we discover is that David's not only talking about how the heavens declare the glory of God, he talks about the firmament, uh, the, the whole of earth declares the glory of God. And he talks about how everything that God created uh, declares the glory of God. And that purges us sort of into a discussion that um, Payleitner is going to have this morning about uh, whether or not um, we can be sure, 100% sure, that there is a creator um, whose name is God. Now, we have to start, I think, initially at this question. Is there a creator of the earth and the stars and the skies and all of those other things. I suppose on some level, from a scientific uh, perspective, some would would try to argue, no, there is no creator. Um, in fact, we know by the concept of the Big Bang Theory, right, that, um, that the creation of the earth was almost coincidental or uh, uh, sort of some, some sort of like a cosmic accident that brought, uh, you know, two sort of bodies of energy together and creates an explosion in which or by which um, the earth was created. You know, for me, uh, not only <clears throat> from a biblical standpoint, from the proof of scripture, um, but from just a, a reality standpoint, it just seems far-fetched. Far-fetched that uh, that you know everything here on Earth, with all of its um, with with all of its advances and technologies and all other kinds of things, that that would be coincidental or accidental. Uh, and so, if it's not coincidental or accidental, then we're right back at the same place of if, if it if it was on purpose, what made it on purpose? Who made it on purpose? Even if there is some sort of cataclysmic uh, accident or explosion that creates things, and it's on purpose, then somebody must have brought those two things together, or something, or some force. Um, and so, I think we're right back at the place of needing a creator for the Earth. Um, and so. We have to sort of now answer the second part of that question about uh, if indeed there is a creator, is his name God? Uh, is he the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh? Um, and the truth of the matter is this. Um, there are many sort of creation stories that exist um, in all different kinds of religions and faiths, but there is no creation story so dis uh, decisive so intact, uh, so specific, uh, so pointed as the creation story or the creation account of Yahweh God. And so because of those things, because scripture has given us such a robust understanding of what God really has done in creation, I believe we have full um, rationale to accept, understand, and believe the fact that God is the creator of all things. I love at the top of page 17, Payleitner says, uh, in other words, the creation proves there is a creator. Because we can look around us and we can see trees and sky and stars and, you know, buildings and whatever else, um, we, we can see a creation that has to make our mind wonder where it came from. And the answer, of course, is that it came from God. God gave us these things. He created these things. Everything was created by him and for him, Paul says um, in uh, the book of uh, Colossians. So Payleitner comes to this conclusion. There really isn't any excuse for not coming to the conclusion that the creation proves there is a creator. People who think otherwise are probably a little too distracted with their own personal accomplishments uh, in order to see God's accomplishments. And what he's saying here is there are a good number of people in this world who deny God as creator. 
And one of the reasons that they deny God as creator is because they go back to what man has done, what man has accomplished, what man has created. And they suggest that, you know, these things were all done apart from God. Now, as believers in Christ and believers in Yahweh God, we know that the way this works is he enables us, he equips us. So, you know, right now we're in the midst of this COVID thing and we're seeing vaccines become much more available. And so, you know, we might say, you know, well, the doctors or the scientists made the vaccine. Sure they did, but who empowered them? Who, who equipped them? Who made it possible for them to do this? Yahweh God did. And so... Um, you know, we have this idea that um, people who struggle with creation struggle with the reality that someone may be um, more in control than they are. Someone may be able to control them. Someone may be in control of all things in this world. All things are not coincidental or accidental. Um, and all things work together for a common good. Um, another biblical principle that folks who deny creation struggle with. So why are we talking about all this creation stuff? You know, this is a prayer, supposed to be a prayer, right? Well, the whole idea here is that Agar asks these questions, right? Who has visited the heavens? Who gathers the wind? Who controls the seas? Who made the earth? What is his name? And what is the son's name? Or what is the name of his son? Um, we have to start at this creation piece because we sort of have to answer these questions sort of uh, systematically, right? So who gathers the wind? Who controls the seas? The creator does. Who has visited heaven? Uh, the creator is in heaven. The son, whom we end the questions with, has visited heaven. Um, who has made the earth? The creator has made the earth. Now then, what is his name? Uh, and I love the way that uh, Paleichner has sort of given us a short um, synopsis of the name question. Um, and when we get to the idea of Yahweh, his name, and how in scripture he has so many names. And just a few months ago here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church, we, we went through a, a message series on the names of God. And we talked about uh, every one of them that Paleitner brings up here. Yahweh, I am, I am the Lord. Uh, El Shaddai, God Almighty. We have El Elyon, uh, God Most High. Uh, we have El Adonai or Yahweh Adonai, the Lord, God, the Lord. Uh, and then we have Jehovah Jireh, God, our provider. There are others as well. Um, and so uh, these are names that the creator God goes by, right? So the answer to what is his name is all of these things. Of course, the simplest of those being what he has said to Moses. When Moses said, when the people ask me whom has sent me, whom sh whom shall I say is sending me? And God says, tell them that I am sent you. I am. I am who I say that I am. Now, the question of the son is the last question then that Paleitner brings up. And, uh, and Paleitner has done a really nice job of sort of getting us to the name of Jesus. Um, we recognize that the name Jesus, that literal English translation, doesn't appear in the, New in the Old Testament. Um, that's because the Old Testament name for the Messiah is Yeshua. And uh, Jesus, or the Jesus -ish, the, the transliteration of Jesus into Hebrew, would be Yeshua. And Yeshua's name does, uh, does arrive many different times in the Old Testament. Um, and we would most commonly refer to that as Joshua. Yeshua is translated into English as Joshua, and there's this really convoluted way that we get to the whole Jesus name. Uh, but as Paleitner says, not until really about the 1700s, right, um, that we get to, I'm sorry, to the 17th century, the 1600s, that we get to the name of Jesus. And so Yeshua is the name of the Son. Uh, so when we walk down through Agar's um, questions. Who has visited the heavens? Who gathers the wind? Who controls the seas? Who has made the earth? God. Yahweh. God. What is his name? Yahweh. God. The creator. Uh, and what is the name of his son? Yeshua is his son. Um, why are these questions important? Why are they actually worth asking? Because of this simple thing. And Paylander didn't spend too much time on this today, but here's why I think these questions are critical. We cannot be afraid. We cannot be afraid. We cannot shy away from answering the questions 
uh, that we are capable of answering of people who are skeptics. And when we think about the most common question that skeptics ask, right, it has to do usually with creation. It, how is it possible that God could create all of this? Um, why do you believe these things? You know, and so I think these are two incredible questions for us to wrap our minds around as well. I would encourage you, um, if you would like to do a little more reading on the idea of God as creator um, and uh, in his creative works and how we believe and what we believe those things, there's two places you might want to look. One place um, is Martin Luther's The Small Catechism, um, which, I, yes, from time to time you'll find some theological things there that you know certainly I don't agree with, you may not agree with as well. But when it talks, when it comes to talking about these sort of basic common things like who is God, what is his name, what has he done, uh, uh, Martin Luther has done a really wonderful job of outlining for us the answers to those questions. And in the small catechism, it shows us biblical references we can go back and look at just that sort of prove what he is suggesting there. So he, he does a question and answer form, Martin Luther does. So he'll say, um, you know, who, who is God? And then he'll say, the answer to this question is so on and so forth. Um, another great place you could go is another catechism. It's called the, uh, the uh, uh, Westminster Catechism. And the Westminster Catechism is from John Knox, uh, and uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, from John Knox, and he uh, has written in a similar sort of way um, as Martin Luther has, uh, a little different theological perspective, but it's the the same kind of question and answer scenario that helps us to understand these things. Um, at the end of the day, I think the reality is Agar is asking these questions up front because what he's going to do in his prayer is point God's people to their God, to the promised Messiah, in a way unlike anyone has ever done before. Even, uh, even in unlike in uh, the way that that David will do that. And so, when we sort of sit down and look at the way that Agar is going to point us to God, we've got to be 100% clear we know who we're talking about here. Yahweh God, the Creator of all things. And his son, Yeshua, Messiah, Jesus, the Savior, the Messiah. I hope you guys have a great week this week. Um, and uh, again, if you have some questions on the on this creation stuff, um, I, those are some great places to go to. Martin Luther's Small Catechism, uh, the Westminster Shorter Catechism. Um, I could also give you some other great options as well. Just reach out to me. You can email me uh, or find me on Facebook. Um, and I'd be glad to, to give you some other solutions. Until we meet again next week for Chapter 4, I hope you have a great week. And uh, I, I hope that uh, you will spend time in God's beautiful creation with this beautiful weather we're having. And remember, He is the creator of all things. Have a great week.